Hey guys, yours truly, Kevin Grace. I'm here in Los Angeles, California at Hillside Memorial Cemetery, paying my respects to a man that probably a lot of you know, that man, Leonard Nimoy. Now, after serving in the U.S. Army from 1953 to 1955, he got a lot of different roles in different little westerns, whether it be Rawhide, Wagon Train, um, Twilight Zone, which wasn't a, a Western. Um, I remember seeing him in some episodes, believe it or not, of Gunsmoke, which which I love. He played a bad guy and he played also as an Indian. So that was funny seeing him, seeing him in that. But of course the role that he's known for is Mr. Spock. Who could else besides him play Mr. Spock? And that show went on until um, 19... 69 the television series um but of course there were movies after which where he reprised that role after uh star trek was done he was on mission impossible so it was weird seeing him on that show as well but definitely a nice career now he passed away at age 83 in uh february of 2015 from palm 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 palmary disease but uh, he's, I don't know if he's buried over here or uh, his urn is uh, put down here, but there's uh, a plaque that has his name and a lot of people have come to pay their respects. The plaque right here says Leonard Nimoy, beloved husband, father, poppy, great grandfather and friend. And you can see all the different rocks the people have left, which is a Jewish tradition and um it's right by this waterfall so like i said i don't know if this is like a urn garden or exactly uh what it is but um he's here and i wanted to pay my respects but if you like this video please subscribe down below and feel free to leave any comments about the great leonard nimoy i always remember him on the doing the um hosting the show in search of and he had that mysterious voice so man just a great actor, and people love them, especially if you love Star Trek. Mr. Spock. So I wanted to mention that uh, Leonard Nimoy did use his image and likeness for a, um, a campaign against cigarette smoking. He used to smoke for a really long, long time, and that probably contributed to his, his passing of pulmonary uh, disease. But um, he did quit smoking, and they used his image. I'm going to show you right here. He said his daughter, um, Julie, and son-in-law, David, are carrying on um, Leonard's mission of helping to educate people about the harmful effects of smoking. So um, they mentioned about this ad. So maybe it'll make you stop smoking. Live long and prosper. Those were the immortal words of Mr. Spock, the Vulcan character made famous by actor Leonard Nimoy. Now his widow, Susan Nimoy, is speaking out about her husband's final debilitating days. He was just in bed all the time. Nimoy had chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, which claimed his life. It's a terrible disease. You cannot catch your breath. He couldn't go out. For him to go from a parking lot into a movie theater, forget it. Her husband of 32 years went public with his condition after being seen in a wheelchair at the airport. The illness was the result of 50 years of smoking, which he'd given up three decades before he died in 2015. Did he say to you, it's time? You just, simple as that. Yeah, he did. He didn't want to be confined to a wheelchair. 
and unable to breathe. She reveals for the first time that Nimoy actually called in nurses to assist in ending his life. They keep adding a little bit more morphine over the period, and he was in such a compromised and weakened condition, it didn't take very long. Leonard believed in dying with dignity. Susan is now appearing in a public service announcement to warn about the dangers of smoking. I'm Susan Nimoy, and I was married to Leonard Nimoy. He had chronic breathing difficulties. I'm sorry. You know, when you love someone, you don't want them to die. She hopes by speaking out against smoking, more people will follow the words Spock made so famous. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. Image of Sirac. So I'm with my father and my grandfather and my brother sitting in the, the bench seats. Women were upstairs. Five or six guys get up on the bima on the stage and they're facing the congregation. They get their talit over their heads and they start this chanting. I think it's called dukhaning. And uh, my father said to me, don't look. So everybody's got their their eyes covered with their hands, or they've got their talit down over their faces, or turned away, turned their back to these guys. And I hear this strange sound coming from them. They're not singers. They were shouters and dissonant. It was all discordant. And they're young, uh, they were doing like, ay, 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 that kind of wailing and all discordant, not together, not in unison. And then the leader would shout out, and the rest of them would respond, it was chilling. You know? <laughs> Whoa, something, something major is happening here. So I peeked. And I saw them with their hands stuck out from beneath their telly like this towards the congregation. I thought, wow. Something really got hold of me. I thought, this is a... I had no idea what was going on. But the sound of it and the look of it was magical. This is the shape of the letter Shin. Hebrew alphabet Shin. Very interesting letter in the, in the language. It's the first letter in the word Shaddai. The first letter in the word Shalom, first letter in the word Shekhinah, which is the name of the feminine aspect of God, who supposedly was created to live amongst humans, the Shekhinah. Why you're not supposed to look came to me much, much later, much later. My wife Susan has a cousin who's a rabbi here in Los Angeles at Temple Israel, and I was telling him this story, and he said the reason you don't look is the the legend is that during that benediction, uh, the Shekhinah comes into the sanctuary to bless the congregation. And you don't want to see that because it's so powerful, it could, it could really get, be seriously injured or it could be fatal. So that's why you protect yourself by hiding your eyes. Don't look. I survived. <laughs> I never dreamed that I would do that someday or be involved with it in some way. But sure enough, one day we're making the Star Trek series, television series. We come to a, a very lovely script called Amok Time, where my character, Spock, who comes from the Vulcan planet, has to go home to fulfill a marriage betrothal, to be married. And the lady who's going to uh, conduct the service is a, a lady named Tepau, played by a wonderful Viennese, Jewish Viennese actress named Celia Lofsky. I'm supposed to meet her when we arrive at the planet. We exchange hellos. It was the first time we are seeing other Vulcans, other people of my race. So I was hoping to find some touches that could develop the story of the Vulcan sociology, history, whatever, ritual. So I said to the director, I think we should have some special greeting the Balkans do. 
because we he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, humans, we, we have these rituals, that we, the things that we do. Um, we shake hands, we, we nod to each other, we bow to each other, we salute each other. What do Vulcans do? So I suggested this. He said, okay. And that's how we, we did it as a greeting, a Vulcan greeting. Now, boy, that just took off through the culture. It was amazing. Within days after it was on the air, I was getting it on the street. People doing this to me, waving to me in this Vulcan gesture. That, that's interesting. And it's been that way to this day. It's almost 50 years later, people are still doing it. It just touched the magic chord. Most people to this day still don't know what it's all about. A lot of people do because I've talked about it a lot. I've been asked the question, where did that come from? And I have very readily put out this story. It's, it's, it's sort of a, like, like a secret it's a handshake or something you know, that people enjoy to exchange with each other as if to say, I'm, I'm in on it. I, I, know this, I know the joke, you know, Star Trek, right? You know, hey, Star Trek. You know, it's great. People don't realize they're blessing each other with this. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And this morning we are remembering a beloved actor who became an enduring fixture in pop culture. Leonard Nimoy, who starred as the emotionless, pointy-eared Vulcan Mr. Neither. Spock on Star Trek, has I passed away. ABC's Chris Connolly with a look back at his remarkable career and the tributes that are pouring in. Words from William Shatner. I loved him like a brother. We will all miss his humor, his talent, and his capacity to love. The tweets and tributes coming from all around the world, multiple generations of colleagues, ardent fans, and those he inspired on screen and in space, all honoring Leonard Nimoy. I see no reason for answers to be couched in riddles. Star Trek's pointy-eared Vulcan, Mr. Spock, second in command on the Starship Enterprise. Nimoy starred as Spock through three primetime seasons back in the 1960s. In a decade of emotion and upheaval, a compelling figure of pure reason. Most illogical reaction. He'd return to the character in a series of Star Trek feature films. 1982's The Wrath of Khan would feature a tearful tribute from Shatner's Captain Kirk. Of all the souls I have encountered in my travels, his was the most Human. He directed the hugely successful comedy, Three Men and a Baby. Good night, sweetheart. Well, he wrote books of poetry, took photographs, even sang fearlessly. In 2007, he met President Obama, a Spock fan, who recalled on Friday greeting Nimoy with the Vulcan salute and Spock's words, live long and prosper, the same famous words that concluded Nimoy's Final tweet. Leonard Nimoy died in Los Angeles on Friday at the age of 83. For Good Morning America, Chris Connolly, ABC News, Los Angeles.